Hey there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna make four cards using some beautiful supplies from our sponsor, Doodle Hog. They have a store on Amazon. I'll link to each of the supplies I used individually as well as a bundle where you can save 15%. Doodle Hog also offers kids art and craft kits, which would be perfect for giving this holiday season. I started off by opening up the watercolor brush pens and they come in a beautiful gift box. They also come with a leaflet that shows you tips and tricks on how to use them. And you can even email them for a um, swatch that you can color yourself. But since I had watercolor paper on hand, I decided to make my own swatch. And I just made 48 boxes here using a swatch stamp set that I have and I just labeled it. So I'll know exactly what these swatches are for. Now, the reason I really wanna swatch these out is because each of the markers has the color name and number on the barrel. A lot of brush pens don't, so that is really handy. You'll know exactly what you're getting when you open up a pen. Now I do find that the plastic is a pretty good match between the uh, color of the ink and the color of the plastic, so that's nice, but it's always a good idea to have a swatch so you're not surprised in your artwork. They dilute really well with water. All you have to do is touch the ink with a wet brush and you can pull the, um, the pigment down. You'll get a smoother effect if you actually go over the entire swatch with water and dilute it down. But at the, on these first swatches, I was just kind of wetting the edge and pulling a little color down. Um, but you can swatch it however you want. The important thing is that you get a good idea of each color and then how it looks if you use it really lightly because sometimes ink can shift when you dilute it. I think all those colors look so pretty together. I didn't put them in rainbow order. I just uh, put them down the order they came in the packaging, but you of course could reorganize them if you want. And I'll just keep that right in my box of markers and that way I'll always know um, what colors are what when I'm using this set. The other thing that I'm gonna to use today, or one of the other things, is their 36 watercolor set. The nice thing about this tin is you have room in the middle to put uh, extra water brushes, pencils, whatever you'd want to carry with you. And it comes with the swatch that you fill in yourself. And it comes in with another one of the leaflets that gives you ideas on how to use a product and uh, how to mix colors and do washes and a lot of your basic techniques. So I think that'd be a wonderful gift for a beginner that's just getting into watercolor. Now the other thing that I'm using is actually a kid's supply, but it works so much like some of the fancy gel crayons they sell for artists, and they are a fraction of the price. You get a lot of pigment in these uh, sticks of color. You'll get several inches of usable media, and they don't wear down too quickly because they're quite pigmented, and you'll see that as we use them in our different projects today. I would um, recommend swatching them out if you're curious how opaque they are. I swatched them on white and black paper just so I'd be able to see um, how much they'll stay and up over other colors and they're very opaque so it is nice if you like to you know add a like a highlight or um like a more opaque accent or a creaminess or maybe you made a boo-boo on a card and you want to cover it up you'll be able to do it with the gel crayons for this first card i'm stamping these large snowflake stamps with clear embossing ink on smooth watercolor paper i wanted to kind of fill the background up and create a design now it's really hard to see because i'm stamping with clear ink and now i'm going to sprinkle on clear embossing powder which is basically a fine um, powder that you sprinkle over a stamped image, you heat it up, and then it gives you a glossy effect. So basically what this is doing is protecting the white of the paper so I'll be able to paint over it. You can kind of see the design there, and as I heat it up with a heat tool, you can see the areas of the paper get shiny. And this is such a fun technique. You can do it with any sort of really bold and graphic stamp, or you could even do it in a colored embossing powder um, if you didn't wanna color over it. But I love this resist technique. I'm starting by wetting the paper pretty generously. I want the paper to appear shiny, and then I'm gonna add some watercolor to it. Now you could use whatever colors you like, but you're gonna get the best effects when you do a resist by using darker colors. So I'm gonna use a variety of dark blues and purples to kind of get a, um, a night sky color. Now don't worry if you're not seeing that much of a resist at first, because sometimes the paint can actually stick to the, um, the embossing powder, but after it's dry, you'll be able to wipe it away, so don't worry about that. You wanna go ahead and give it plenty of color because watercolors shift a little bit lighter when they dry, especially when you're working on wet paper. The wetter the watercolor, the more it's gonna shift when it dries, so keep that in mind as you're working. And I love this because you can do these cards assembly line style. Now, what you can do to wipe this away, you can do a couple different things. You can use a damp Q-tip and you can gently go in and wipe the um, paint 
off of the resist anywhere it sticks. But one of the better ways to do it, I think, is to wrap a baby wipe or a mildly damp cloth around your finger and then just kind of slightly brush over the raised areas. Um, you want to keep moving the cloth so that you're always going with a clean spot. And it's got to be just slightly damp. So a baby wipe is perfect because it has just the right amount of dampness to it. And you can lift off the ink without damaging the background. And it's such a pretty effect that really just that mounted on a cardstock, folded in half is going to be such a beautiful Christmas card or card for any winter, uh, winter season. When, any winter occasion. So for this card, I am stamping this sweet little baby deer onto another piece of smooth white watercolor paper. And then I'm stamping these cute little animals and a tree and a little bit of background there. I'm basically making a scene. The inks I'm using are a pigment ink that will be waterproof as soon as it's dry. And I'm using just basically a dark brown and a dark green ink because it'll help, um, it'll kind of fade away as we're coloring. It'll really uh, just really match the scene really well. And I did heat set it just to make sure it was fully dry before I went ahead and watercolored. So the first thing I'm going to do is really thin down some of the watercolor here because I just want to tint the background a little bit. I'm just going to go over, kind of over the branches everywhere except for the snow, the little bits of snow, and paint the sky in with a very, very watered down uh, blue. And then I've added a little bit of the violet into it to make a nice a kind of purpley snow color, super, super light. And that's just going to give me some shadows in the snow drifts. Now I'm going to switch over to the watercolor brush pens and do the rest of my coloring. The nice thing about these pens is that they're actual real brushes there and you can get super, super needle fine detail with the points. So I'm going to go in and add some color to the pine needles here. And because the brush tip is so fine, I can press when I want a thicker line closer to the base of the branch and I can lift up when I want that finer line at the tip of the branches. So you want to use that just like you would a regular brush. You have the, um, the response and the control that a regular brush would give you. And the other thing I really like about these for doing direct coloring versus like a felt tip marker is that it's not going to peel your paper because the brushes are, the bristles are so gentle and delicate with your paper. So even if you're using cardstock, it shouldn't peel your paper when you're coloring your stamped images. I'm using a really light gray to enhance the shadows in the snow and I'm using some darker greens to and cooler darker greens to kind of push those trees further into the background. Now what I really love about these brush pens and it's important to use a watercolor paper or a Bristol, some sort of cardstock or watercolor paper that's meant for using water. Um, I love that I can just grab a water brush or a wet brush and I can spread that around. This is just the water brush that came in the kit and it works perfectly for blending those colors together and kind of blending out to white, which is a technique we love to do with our alcohol markers, but quite frankly, it's pretty tricky. It's so easy with these pens. And you can even go in an area that's already colored and wet with a brush pen and it's not going to peel the paper like it would with a felt tip pen. So I really like that. And there's our colored image, which we will turn into a card later. Now this is probably my favorite card of the batch. It's so uh, it's so fun. We're gonna start just by sketching a snowman. And I started with the carrot nose and now I'm gonna draw a pipe. And I'm just doing this with a pencil with super light lines because that way I can um, refine it a bit when I ink over it. So uh, you could go right in with your ink pens if you're really confident with a waterproof pen or whatnot. But I like to do a pencil first just to be safe because I usually like to change something before I'm done. So after I got the basics down, I'm just going in with a waterproof pen and I am refining. You can see I ended up moving the pipe a little bit because I had it at kind of an awkward angle. And I'm just kind of drawing chunky coal lumps for the mouth. I'm drawing a holly and berries on the hat. I'm going to put a chunky sweater on this guy. And I'll draw a little pattern on the sweater too that will be really fun to color in with the brush pens. But before I color, I want to go in and I want to erase any of my pencil marks. So I'm just going in with a soft plastic eraser. You can find those anywhere. Just look for the white vinyl or white plastic erasers. They're very gentle on watercolor paper. Oh, the watercolor paper I'm using too, by the way, is just a purchased pre-folded watercolor card. Since I'm not stamping, I don't have to have a super, super smooth card. Um, so it works out really well. If you have any watercolor paper at home, you can cut it down to a regular card size and fold it in half. So if you wanted to make a five by seven card like I have here, you would want a seven by 10 piece of watercolor paper folded in half. And I like to tape it down just so I get a nice white frame around it when I'm done. It just makes it look a little bit more professional and that way it's not going to buckle as you're working. Kind of like the snowflake card did how, you know how it was kind of like buckling when we had tons of water. This will prevent that. So I just have a piece of cardboard I'm taping to. 
through. Now I'm using the brush pens just straight up, straight up on their own to color in the scarf to begin with. You can see you get a really good detail with these pens and you get a really solid coverage. I'm not getting any streaks whatsoever. Um, I would recommend working like starting at one end and working rather than kind of jumping around. Um, now I'm jumping around a bit on the nose because I don't want the whole thing a solid orange color, but when you want something a solid color, just kind of start at one end and keep on going so you're always working off the wet edge. Now I'm blending out that orange with a kind of a orangey yellow in the middle and you can see how it gives it a little bit of dimension. It gives it a round look. I'm doing the same thing with different shades of brown on the corn cob pipe and I flat filled the uh, coal and the eye. Now I wanted to put in some gray and I should have blended that out as soon as I put that gray in but I decided I would wait and I would work on different parts of the picture. You're going to get the best success with blending with your brush markers if you blend it out as soon as you color it down. So just kind of a, just a little tip there. And different paper will uh, react differently. So if you were using, say, just a plain white cardstock from the Optha Supply Store, you definitely want to blend it out right away because it doesn't have that coating on the paper that watercolor paper or Bristol board has. And I am going in and adding some more details with my color. I'm checking the numbers before I go ahead and put it on the paper. I thought this aqua would be really pretty next to the red. I love aqua and crimson together anyway. And I wanted to pull in another color that, um, you know, was an orange just to, you know, make it look nice. And I thought the orange would look kind of clashy on the tie. And we got the, you know, I think the orange carrot is plenty. Now I'm going in with the, with the gel crayons. And the nice thing about these is they are going to build up on top of anything we've added. So we can um, go over areas, make them feel more substantial, make them feel more blended. They're just really nice for that. I'm going in with a little bit of red on the side of the carrot. I'm doing some of the black on the hat. You can blend these with your finger like an oil pastel. You can blend them with a wet brush because they're water soluble. They're just very versatile and it just depends on the look you're going for. Like if you want it to like spread out in an even layer, blend it with a brush. If you want a really thick creamy layer, blend it with your finger or with a silicone blending tool or whatever you like to blend things with. I know it kind of, uh, some people don't like the feeling of the media on their fingers, but you get such a beautiful blend with them. And uh, I, I really personally had fun, <laughs> had fun highlighting with them and, and blending them out with my fingers. You can add highlights to the coal, give the coal kind of like a, um, like a three-dimensional look on the mouth. It, by adding just a little bit of highlight and blending it out, it makes it look like three-dimensional. Now I want to add some snow to this piece. So I took the white watercolor pan, sprayed it with water, and then I used a toothbrush to kind of um, liquefy some and uh, turn it into a paint. And then I just flicked that over my, um, flicked it over my scene for a light dusting of snow. If you wanted a more opaque snow, you could totally use a uh, like gel pen. You could use a bit of white gouache. You could use white acrylic paint, um, or you can just use the watercolor in the kit. It's completely up to you. You have those options. Uh, but just know that you will get a brighter white effect like I got here with a, with a, like a white gouache or a white acrylic paint. But you want that to be your last, your last step because once you put the snow down, you really don't want to be fussing around with it too much because you're going to smudge into the snow. And then after that's done, remove your tape and you have got a beautiful snowman scene, perfect for any winter occasion. And uh, that white frame, I think, really sets it off. So, um, so take those extra couple minutes and tape down your image for a beautiful effect. Now this, I almost didn't try this effect. I didn't think it was going to work with these gel crayons and it worked so beautifully. So what you want to do is spritz your stamp with some water and this will work with any rubber stamp and then you're going to color it with your gel crayon. Now this works best with solid stamps and I, by solid stamps I mean stamps with a lot of solid pattern like this has versus say just an outline. It would work with an outline but it's going to be a lot more um, impactful if you've got a big solid area. The cool thing about this is you color the stamp once and you can spritz it and get a couple more stamps from it. So if you're trying to make a bunch of, of cards for Happy New Year or Christmas or winter time, anything like that, you can make a bunch. You color it once, stamp four or five times. You could do so many cards at once, just assembly line style in this fashion. And then I flicked on some of the gel crayon that I scribbled onto a palette, uh, the same way I did on the snow on the other card. And it just kind of fills it in a bit and makes it look a little snowy and wintry, like kind of like there's light lighting up the snow or something. Now to finish the cards, all you have to do is just uh, mount them onto some cardstock. And since I'm using colored cardstock, I actually go ahead and put a panel of white on the inside for writing. And you could even, um, 
And here that inside panel with some repositionable tape if you want to make the card reusable. That way somebody can remove your sentiment and use it again if they wanted to. So I usually use washi tape for that, but um, you can also just adhere the panel inside for writing. And then if you want to, you can add a sentiment. These can be used for any winter occasion, but if you wanted to add a season's greetings or a Merry Christmas or anything like that, you certainly can. I decided to keep it a little generic and use season's greetings and let it snow on my cards here. And I just stamped on a scrap of white cardstock, or it could be leftover white watercolor paper. We always have these little scraps next to our cutting boards, right next to our cutting uh, paper trimmers after we're done doing projects. They are perfect for stamping your sentiments and uh, using them on cards. So I usually keep all those little sentiment strips, all those little strips of cardstock next to my um, next to my craft table so I can grab them and use them anytime I just need to stamp a sentiment. And um, I decided to go over the tree area for my season's greetings because I didn't want to cover up anything else on that cute card. And then um, I used some of the leftover purple scraps from those other cards to put a sentiment there. Now you could embellish this with glitter or rhinestones or ribbon or anything like that, that you have in your stash. So be creative creative when you're making your cards and really make them um, personal to you and personal to the person you're going to send them to. But the nice thing about a flat card is that it will mail with no extra postage and I really love that. Please check out our sponsor, Doodle Hog. If you want any of the supplies I use today, including a money-saving bundle, if you want all three, I'll have everything linked up down below. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy crafting.